What we've seen so far are the problems that happen on a single period, like a day or a week. Or we assume that there is no significant change between one period to the other. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about an inventory model in which there is a significant change from one period to the other. So let's start. Due to the changes from one period to the other, the main characteristic of this multi-period problem is that the decision maker needs to make decision at more than one point in time. So for each period or for each point in time, he or she needs to make a decision. So let's see an example. So in this example, sailco corporations must determine how many sailboats should be produced. So if you look at these words, determine how many sailboats, it means that this is a clue about the decision variable because this is something that Selco must decide, right? And then you see um, it says that the demand during each of the next four quarters are uh, as follows. And then Selco must meet demands. So it is a requirement to meet these demands. In other words, these demands, they are the constraints because Selco must meet those demands, right? And then here you see that this is again the clue for the decision variable. So it's the same like this, but it is even more specific. It says must decide how many sailboats should be produced during that quarter. So basically this is the decision for variable for this problem. So sometimes the problem itself tells you what the decision variable is, you just need to be ready to notice that clue, okay? So this is the decision variable. And then we keep reading and see here up to 40 sailboats, as I've uh, mentioned so frequently that if you see at most, at least up to, it means this is about constraint. And then can produce additional sailboats. Can produce additional sailboats means that this is again a decision variable, right? Because Selco can decide. It is Selco's decision to produce additional sailboats or not produce additional sailboats. Because this is something that Selco can decide. This is again a clue for the decision variable. And then finally, this problem wants us to minimize the sum of production and inventory costs during the next four quarters. Okay, as usual, I will give you the pause in the video for about five seconds to give you time to really read this problem carefully. Okay, so let's start talking about the decision variable. Um, so the decision variable is to uh, determine how many sailboats. More specifically, it says here how many sailboats should be produced during that quarter. So we can say um, we just give the name the variable xt, which is uh, the number of sailboats produced during quarter t. Okay, and then uh, we've talked about this before that this is also a decision variable we can produce additional sailboats so we give this the name of yt which means the number of additional sailboats that we produce at quarter t so xt is the sailboats that is manufactured using the regular time regular time labor and then yt is the additional sailboats that we produce using overtime labor. So regular time produces XT, overtime labor produces YT. And then here we also define IT. This is not explicitly mentioned in the problem, but you will see later that this is um, a variable that will really help us to show the relation between XT with xt plus 1, and then xt plus 1 with xt plus 2, and so on. 
So IT is the number of sailboats on hand at the end of quarter T. In other words, we can say that IT is the ending inventory of quarter T. Okay, so using the decision variables that we've defined in the previous slide, we can formulate the objective function as follows. For every sailboat that we produce in each quarter using the regular time labor, the cost is $400 per boat. So 400 times x1, x2, x3, and x4. So these are all the boats that we produce using regular time. Additional sailboats may be produced using overtime labor, but then the cost become $450 per boat. So these are all the overtime labors that produce um, sailboats. And then we need the variable IT, as I've said before in the previous slide, because for every single sailboat that you have at the end of the quarter, you need to pay $20. For example, this cost is because you have to um, have a warehouse to store all your ships or your sailboats at the end of the quarter, and then you have to pay to rent that warehouse. So this is the $20 is the inventory cost. The cost because you keep inventory at the end of a quarter, T. So these are the inventory costs. Okay, so the definition for XT is the number of sailboats that we produce by regular time. YT is the number of sailboats produced by overtime. And then IT is the number of sailboats at the end of quarter T. Okay, so you, you must be specific in saying that IT is the inventory or the number of sailboats at the end of quarter t at the end okay so you must be specific let me give you an illustration between xt yt demand and it so suppose at the beginning of this quarter you have one sailboat and then you produce um, three sailboats using regular time you produce two additional sailboats in the overtime and then if the demand at quarter t equals 2, the ending inventory equals 4, right? Because you have 1, and then you produce 5, so you have 6, and then the demand is 2, so your ending inventory for this quarter equals 4. And then your ending inventory at quarter t becomes the beginning inventory of the quarter t plus one right so if you end this quarter with four you begin the next quarter with four as well okay let's say in the next quarter you don't produce anything so you don't produce any sailboats and then suppose the demand is three your ending inventory for this quarter equals one sailboat now let's talk about the constraint. The first one says that we must meet the demands on time. It means that, for example, in the first quarter, we have the demand of 40 sailboats. We have to fulfill this demand in the first quarter. We cannot delay this demand into the second, the third, or the fourth quarter. We must fulfill these 40 sailboats at the first quarter. Okay. How can we formulate this constraint? Well, first of all, let's try to check the inventory equation at the end of each quarter. Using the illustration in the previous slide, the ending inventory of the first quarter equals the beginning inventory of the first quarter, which is 10. So here has an inventory of 10 sailboats at the beginning of the first quarter. So begin with 10, produce with regular time x1, produce additional with overtime labor y1, minus the demand 40, right? This is what we've done in the previous slide, defining the ending inventory. Let's try again 
to define the ending inventory of quarter two. The beginning inventory of quarter two is the ending inventory of quarter one. Right, because you end the first quarter with I1, it means that you start quarter two with the inventory of I1. Plus, you produce in quarter two using regular time equals X2. You produce additional sailboats using overtime in quarter two equals Y2 minus 60, the demand of quarter two. Same for I3. Uh, we start with the beginning inventory of the third quarter, which is the ending of the second, plus what you produce in quarter three minus the demand of quarter three, and so on until you define I4. And then we can say that we meet the demand if all of this inventory greater than or equals to zero. Right? So, what is the logic behind this? Well, if we take a look at the equation, it equals it minus 1, so the invent ending inventory of the previous quarter, plus what you produce minus the demand, it must be greater than or equals to 0. It means that if you move this minus dt to the other side, you can see that the beginning inventory of this quarter plus what you produce must at least equal or greater than the demand, right? So this is um, how or why this IT greater than or equals to zero means that you meet the demand on time. Again, the reasoning is because you, if you move this minus DT to the right hand side, you see that what you have in the beginning plus what you produce is greater than or equals to demand. In other words, you fulfill the demand on time. The next constraint is quite simple. It says that you can only produce 40 sailboats with regular time. It means all the excess x1 up to x4 must be less than or equals to 40. As usual, to complete the formulation, you need to put the sign restrictions. Uh, all variables must be greater than or equals to zero for t, quarter one, two, three, and four. Now the first question to check your understanding. Suppose the optimal solution to this problem looks like this. Okay, and then I say, um, in the optimal solution, Selco has no sailboats left at the end of period four. Is it true or false? I will give you the answer after the pause of the video. The answer is true because in the optimal solution, you see that I4 equals zero. So the optimal solution uh, makes Selco has no sailboats left at the end of period four. Here's the second question. Which one of these connects the decision from a period to the next one? I will give you the answer after the pause, so think about it. The answer is B, the inventory variables. Because if you look at the equation that defines the ending inventory at quarter T, this um, has the components of the inventory, ending inventory of the previous period, plus what you do in this period minus the demand in this period. And then remember that you will bring this IT to become the beginning inventory of the next quarter or next period. So you will keep connecting what you do in one period and then bring it to the next period, to the next period and so on. So this inventory variables are very important in connecting all the decisions in the multi-period problem. 